the recording has been started. Yeah, just Okay, let's explore advanced warehousing in Dynamic 365 HCM. So we have a one more topic from advanced warehousing, which was a series of advanced warehousing, which is cross talking with Dynamic 365 supply chain management. Okay. So thank you all for joining us today, and a big thank you to all our volunteers, speakers, and attendees who always support us and give their precious and important time to this group. I would like to especially thank our today's speaker, Kasun, who is also a Microsoft valuable professional and always willing to help Dynamics community. Thanks, Kasun, for coming forward to share your knowledge about cross docking and advanced warehousing. We really appreciate your effort. Thanks, Amar. Okay. So, oh, you're welcome, man. Uh, so, what this uh, group is all about. So, uh, so, we just started this group a few months back. And the main aim of this group is to get the D365 FinOps professional from ANZ regions so, so that they can share their knowledge of D365 ecosystem with wider community based in ANZ region. This is the platform where everybody from ANZ region can come forward and share their knowledge which they have learned over the past years. So as this is your group, our group, I would like you to uh, everyone uh, or I would like to request you all to come forward and share your knowledge by speaking in our upcoming session. So if you want to share D365 FinOps knowledge or a power platform knowledge, you can come to any of our volunteer who is Kamar, Rachit, Faisal, myself, Zishan or Vishal. So feel free to contact these guys and uh, try to just give your time to this community as well. OK, so uh, what topics we have covered in our previous session? So uh, the areas we have covered uh, are you can find electronic reporting, dual rights, project operation, intercompany trading, power apps case studies, advanced warehousing, enterprise asset management. And you can find all the videos of these sessions on your, our YouTube channel, which you can find in our upcoming slides. So this is uh, you can just connect with your own group through these mediums such as Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, or can join our meetup group as well, where you can get all the notification of our upcoming sessions. Okay, here is the link which will help you to joining the group on LinkedIn. And so we have also have a Twitter link here. So if you want to join us through Twitter, you can join through this link. And the most important way you can find all the videos of our previous session conducted by our great speakers. So this is a link to our YouTube channel. So here you can subscribe and you can find all the videos from our uh, speakers. OK, so uh, we have some upcoming sessions. Uh, we have a plan. Uh, we have a session planned on project operation by Ethan Lee, who is based in Melbourne, Australia. I would like to thank all our speakers and the great dedication they have towards this group. So I will quickly hand over to our today's speaker, Mr. Kasun, to take us through some exciting functionalities. So over to you, man. Thanks, Amma. Thanks a lot, and thanks for the introduction. And let me start sharing my screen. Um, let me know when you guys see it. Yes, we can. OK, cool. Awesome. So today's topic will be cross talking with Dynamics 365 supply chain management. So let's get into it. And uh, it's a bit about uh, myself. I'm uh, Kasum Patirane and uh, Dynamics 365 Power Platform Evangelist. I kind of work at uh, DXE Technology as a consultant and I started my journey with uh, Microsoft Business Applications from Dynamics AX and have experience working with the FAX and the FNO uh, previous versions for nine years. And um, I have uh, got experience with working with the ERP and CRM as well. So I've worked with uh, D365 uh, CE as well a bit and uh, also in, um, involved in uh, some of the Power Platform implementations as well. I do blogging using D365 uh, bits and uh, you can find me in d365bits.com and here will be the links to, um, so if you Type it in d365bits.com, so that will be the, the site. And you can also find me in the YouTube as well under d365bit and Twitter as well, same. And this is my LinkedIn uh, profile. So if you have any questions or anything, feel free to yeah, ask me on the LinkedIn as well. 
and uh, I'm also heavily involved with the community events as well, and I've been recently voted as uh, Microsoft MVP award as well. And uh, a bit more about myself, I enjoy playing cricket and running and hiking, so if you have any interest on these areas as well, feel free to uh, join and discuss anything on that topic as well. Okay, so let's get into the agenda. Uh, what we're going to uh, discuss today will be uh, cross-talking and I'll just introduce about what is cross-talking basically, what's the conceptual, concept-wise what is cross-talking and then I'll move into the um, plan cross-talking, the setup that you need to do in the system and uh, I will also talk about some of the variations it has. Um, so this is the basic setup that um, I'll introduce from the, the the setup perspective and there are some variations and I'll uh, speak a bit more about it um, as well. And uh, the plan for talking inquiry screen, I'll talk about inquiry screen as well. And uh, there will be some demos uh, which I'll be doing uh, with, uh, with the cross talking. So I'll get into those things as well. And then the Q&A. So you can, say, um, can ask uh, questions uh, from me uh, at the end. Um, so let's go to the uh, what is cross talking. So let's see what we mean by cross talking. So cross talking is actually a method used to optimize and process the goods in a warehouse by using inbound stock directly for outbound processing without storing them in the warehouse. So normally what will happen um, when you have uh, when, you, when you don't have the cross talking. So let's say uh, you have an order, um, but you don't have any inventory in the system and then you have a purchase order coming from a vendor so what usually happens is um, when you receive the po then it'll be actually putting into a bulk or a picked location and um, so it, so you'll have a movement from your uh, P, uh, from your location um, to the uh, to the bulk or pick location from your receiving location and then from that then you'll actually have to receive an um, then release to warehouse. So once you do that, then what happens actually, you'll have a work generated. So there will be another work which will be from peak or bulk uh, coming back to the uh, Beidou. So that will be uh, that's will be the the basic process. So in this uh, cross stocking method, you'll not have that uh, the additional step of moving the stock to the bulk areas. So we will actually uh, straight away allocate to the uh, to the cross stocking area. If you have a cross stocking uh, location in your warehouse, then you can actually uh, allocate to the cross stocking uh, location straight away when the goods arrive from the vendor. So you actually remove that unnecessary steps in your uh, warehouse and you actually save some uh, time as well as the cost as well of uh, sometimes you might be using temporary workers to do that. So there will be yeah, some scenarios like that. So that's a bit about the introduction, but I'll um, go more in depth on the, the cross docking as a whole. Cross docking uh, also have um, several benefits uh, from the warehousing perspective. So if you if we talk about um, in terms of the concept that uh, I was talking about the, uh, without cross docking, what it looks like. So imagine if you have uh, if you have uh, four lorries actually delivering uh, stocks to uh, different stores, so they have actually have to um, go through um, several steps. I mean, uh, if you want to deliver the stocks uh, to the different stores, that so you need to have uh, uh, three trips for the one lorry. So you have uh, actually 12, um, uh, 12 journeys you have to make. But if you have a distribution center, you actually minimize this because you go to the distribution center from the distribution center, then there will be a uh, transfer to the uh, store. So that's basically how it started the cross talking. So this is how it originally started uh, with the Walmart. Uh, it's one of the companies to pioneer the concept of cross talking successfully. And uh, in terms of G365, the, um, the differences I was mentioning on what will happen in terms of the system as well as uh, what you will uh, save in terms of the operation perspective as well. So, but we will. Um, uh, I'll show you more onto the uh, on that as well with the demos as well. So, uh, let me see. Did I cover all the areas here? Um, yeah. So this I was telling that the cross talking is actually um, important logistic strategy in the supply chain distribution industry, and um, the idea of the cross talking is to eliminate the storage and order to picking uh, functionality in the warehouse while still allowing it to serve its receiving and shipping function. 
So there are several benefits uh, from the warehousing perspective, as I mentioned earlier. So it reduces the handling of materials in the warehouse, potentially avoiding damages and additional labor requirements. I was talking about the temp because some of the other uh, um, places I've seen that they use uh, temp um, uh, temporary workers to do these kind of activities. So you can actually minimize the temporary workers uh, by introducing this uh, cross stocking functionality. So that's one of the one of the advantages uh, of having it. And it speeds up the flow of the materials in the warehouse and potentially uh, reducing the lead times as well. And it also can reduce the storage space requirements as well. If you um, if you are uh, if you heavily dependent on the cross stocking scenarios, then you can actually reduce the space and storage requirement as well. And it can also reduce the transportation costs by consolidating the cross stock and uh, cross stocking also related to the production as well. Uh, but today we're not going to go in depth onto the production area. We'll look at the purchase orders and the trans orders. And, uh, but cross stocking will be also, uh, can be used in the production scenarios as well. Production uh, to an outbound location is relevant for the manufacturers as well. Uh, especially in, uh, if you uh, produce high volume and ideally want to ship the finished goods as soon as um, uh, they report as finished from the production line, then this can be used. Uh, so the uh, the plant cross stocking will have uh, 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 prior uh, receiving the goods planned uh, the cross stocking prior receiving the goods and also there is another one called unplanned cross stocking so the cross stocking decision is made at the time of uh, receiving the inbounds okay let's go more in depth onto the cross stock and look at uh, one of the scenarios and so as I the cross stocking is a method to use to optimize the processing of goods. So let's look at the uh, traditional uh, scenario. So you have uh, goods coming in and you receive it, uh, receive it and inspect it, store it, and then you pick it and then you stage it and then it will be out. But if you have a cross stock scenario, you have uh, goods coming in and you'll be doing a received and inspection and you mixing and sorting and you'll be staging it and then it will be out of the door. So there will be few steps will be reduced uh, uh, from the, the the warehouse perspective, the operations because of the cross stocking part. So that's the advantage of having the cross stocking uh, in your uh, operations to use this uh, feature actually, as well and general the cross stocking. This is actually I'm talking about the general, but when you use the cross stocking part or uh, the feature, actually it will improve your uh, it will reduce some some of the workload uh, from the warehouse perspective. And cross stocking is um, um, so I was talking about uh, the cross stocking as well as where it's used and okay so let's go into the uh, next slide um, I think I think this is the last slide probably and then we'll prob uh, and then we'll go to the setups after that we'll go into this, uh, uh, the the phenops and I'll show you more on that. And the cross stock, uh, plant cross stocking. So you have uh, inventory quantity required to satisfy an order, which will be directed to the correct outbound docking or staging area. All uh, remaining inventory. So this is in terms of the uh, the FinOps. So it's called plant. If you uh, cross stock, it's also called as a plant cross stocking. So if you if you see the plant cross stocking, so that's also talking about the cross stocking uh, feature. Uh, and there's a separate screen as well. I'll go into that screen plan cross stocking uh, as well. And uh, all rem uh, and the other point is all remaining inventory from the inbound uh, source will be directed to the correct storage location uh, through the regular put away process. And cross stocking allows the worker to skip inbound put away. So that's what I was earlier mentioning to skip the inbound put away and outbound picking of the inventory that is already uh, marked to an outbound order. So when you receive from the vendor, it will be directly going to the uh, against that sales order and it will be going to the cross stock location if you have a cross stock uh, separate location. So that's that's what uh, generally happens. So you'll actually uh, remove these uh, part from the the phenops. So that's that's what will happen. And there has been few fixes in the uh, plan cross stocking in 10.0.9. So it was uh, when it started, I guess, 10.0.9 uh, initially. I'm not sure exactly. <clears throat> Is it 10.09.9 they released it, but uh, when it started 10.09, I remember there were some issues in the inquiry screen, so uh, which we has been fixed in some of them, but I'll go through on those ones as well uh, later on. Okay, so good. So
So let's look at in terms of the setup wise, what are the setups that we need in the system? So we need to create a new work class called crosstalk. So we need to create this um, crosstalk <coughs> work, work class. And then we need to have a work template for crosstalking, especially. And uh, so this is um, how you have the, the, the work template. So you'll see the work code type the cross talking um, and one more thing I need to mention is that uh, you need to enable this in the feature management. So there is a separate uh, cross talking feature in the feature management. So once you enable it, you would see uh, the new uh, forms coming in to the screen and uh, the work code type cross talking. You have to select the work code type cross talking for the work template and then uh, define your uh, work for that. And then you need to have a cross talking template. Uh, so this is the create uh, the cross talking template. So there will be different uh, demand requirements. You have the marking, and then order as well. So there are a few uh, as well. But uh, generally, have seen using the marking. So it will be marked against the so uh, so will be marked against the PO or so will be marked against the TO. So PO and TO um, you have supply sources. I think there are four supply sources. So generally, have used using purchase order and the transfer order receipt. And uh, work creation wise, uh, you have location directives and also the shipment as well. So there's a uh, two um, locating type. So if you use the location directive, so you can be based on the location directive. And let's say you have a uh, crosstalk, um, crosstalk uh, location. So you actually can have in the location directive that uh, um, mention the crosstalk instead of your Beidou. So it will be directly going to the uh, the crosstalk uh, location if it's a crosstalking uh, scenario. And there are some uh, time windows, but uh, um, this one, if you if you require, you can use this maximum window, minimum window time um, setups. Uh, but generally, I've been using the demand requirements and work uh, creation and uh, Okay, let's go into the next setup. So this is where I was talking about the uh, location directive. So the location directive, if you go to the edit query, you can actually specify um, in that case, uh, if you have a separate location for the cross talking, you can put it as cross talking. And then you, uh, th then when you release it, it'll be actually uh, uh, in the sense what it'll be actually going into the cross talk uh, separate uh, location instead of the BADO. Yeah, this will, this will come in handy if you have a separate uh, location. So that's why the the, yeah, the other setups being used at the end, as shown. And uh, at crosstalk under the uh, work classes uh, in the purchase uh, put away mobile device menu item. So if you have if you're using the two step method, uh, this is actually the two step receiving. So you purchase receive and purchase put away. So you have two steps to do. So in this method, uh, you have to use this work class ID. The work class ID was the first setup that we did. So you have to use this work class ID uh, uh, to map it in the mobile device menu item. So you have to do that. And um, uh, there are some variations to this. I'll talk about that as well. So you, if you have, uh, if you don't have the two-step method, but if you use the in, instead the two-step method, if you use the one-step method, like purchase, receive, and put away. So you have uh, you have the um, you have the capability of doing it. But uh, there were some there were some issues with uh, batch, if it's a batch or a serial item. So I've been working with uh, Microsoft. I'll, I'll talk about more on the fixes. So um, there's one um, still working on, but um, there are um, there's that possibility will be coming up uh, soon uh, on the currently. I think you can use the uh, purchase uh, put away and uh, purchase receive and put away uh, for the purchase line. But if you use the load line, there will be still some issues with the uh, serial and the batch number. So that's, I'm still working on that. So um, there will be uh, fixes coming uh, to fix that. So that then that will be great because you can do that uh, without the two step method. You can uh, you do using the one step method. So that will come in handy in the future. So this is the general setup which is there, but um, I think there isn't any document that you can use that uh, purchase uh, receive and put away from the one step method and yeah I'll hope to do uh, some more uh, blogs about it so we'll have more more information on that as well um, it'll generally work for the simple items but it'll have that issue for the uh, serial and the bash items so I'll talk about that when it when we come to the, the scenarios uh, more 
and uh, plan cross docking. Uh, so this is the inquiry and the report we have plans cross docking. Make sure this is actually a temp table. So if you are planning to put into the workspace, this will not work because this is this is actually a temp table. So that to be yeah, careful on that if you are if you use the workspaces uh, highly with the warehouse. Um, you will not be able to use this plan cross docking into the workspaces because it's a temp table. Um, I haven't heard that that's been changed. Uh, so when I was dealing with Microsoft, so this was still a temp table. Not sure when it's going to change in the future. Um, yeah, so let me go to the system and then we'll uh, talk about, uh, I'll show you some of this in the scenarios and some of the setups from the system itself. So we get out uh, from all the slides. Let's come into the system. Sheet. Um, screens for a bit. Okay. So if he come to, um, okay, let's uh, let me go. Okay, let me go to some of the setups that we had and. Uh, I'll show you quickly on those setups. So I was talking about um, one thing is the cross docking template is one of the important ones. So I'm not going to go through all, but some of them are uh, really basic uh, setups, but I'm going to uh, take on the key ones. So the key one is the work uh, cross docking template. So this is where I'm using marking. So you have order reservation marking. And in the location directives, you have shipment locations and the location directive. So uh, the location directive is where I'm based on um, separate uh, cross docking uh, locations. So if you have a cross docking uh, separate location in your warehouse, so this will be um, that setup. But if you are, um, you can also based on the shipment location. So the in, let's say you have um, you have a beta one and beta two, um, and if you want to be, uh, if you want that, uh, if you have two items, you want that um, the cross dock item also to follow that uh, the shipment, uh, so that even though you have mentioned as the cross docking location or the uh, beta two, it'll actually go to the beta one or it will follow the shipment location. So that would be the the difference in this scenario and. This is actually mapped against the work template. So the work template, uh, yeah, you have uh, two, uh, two steps here, pick and put away, and uh, and the edit query. Let's go to the edit query. So it's not 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 much on the edit query part, or oh, only on the location directive that will be there. So I'll show you the location directive as well. Let's go to the location directives. Yeah, so the difference will be here. I have a cross dock uh, location. So if I go to cross docking here and edit query, you'll see my location is cross dock. So whenever there's a cross dock, it'll actually go to the cross docking location rather than the beta. And yeah, so that's the change here. And uh, yeah. Talk about, about that two setups. Work templates, we talk about location directors, we talk about location directory templates. And uh, the the one of the other ones is the work classes. So work classes it's it's not uh, much you just create a work class. Um that's about the work class, so nothing much uh, major on the work class there. Okay, so let's move into some of the yeah the cases. So let's create uh, Let's create a sales order. Let's do a scenario where you have a sales order and then you don't have inventory. Or you might have inventory, but you're actually marking against a uh, PO which is coming from a vendor. So let's demo that. And uh, one more thing I need to highlight that I'm using actually 15 here. So there are some issues in the 15, 10.0 order 15. So I had a couple of videos done because of that uh, situation to show you the transfer order and the on hand mix scenario. So there could be three scenarios. One will be uh, you map the full quantity, the sales order quantity. Let, let me go through and uh, by the same time I'll tell you. So if you have SO, if it's mapped fully with the PO, 
So that would be uh, one scenario. And then it could be um, mapped against the PO. That would be another scenario. Or it could be a mixed scenario with uh, SO and PO together. Uh, sorry, um, SO mapped against PO and TO. Or SO mapped against uh, on-hand inventory. And then the rest will be fulfilled by PO or the TO. So there will be mixed mix mode uh, scenarios as well. Um, let's go with the basic flow. So the basic flow, I'm going to map against the PO. Yeah, so I'll take my item A301. Let's save my quantity. All right. I'll save it. Go to the um, Just confirm this one, confirm sales order. And I had created a PO earlier, so so I'll be marking against that PO. And she's yet to be delivered. So this is the um, this is actually the um, the confirming. So just confirm first, and then I'll go to the marking and show you how to do the marking part. Right, so we did that. And then the marking. So if you go here, marking, so you have a PO here. Um, so you could uh, select the PO. Let's say set mark now. So I'm actually marking full quantity. So in this environment with the 15, if you have a mix uh, scenario, then you'll have an error. So that because of that, I'm not going to try the dynamic scenario on this scenario uh, on this. So I'm going to go with the full quantity. Um, I'll show you the video on the other other versions. So it will be it will work in the the newest versions. So I'll save it. Okay. Um, and then I'll do the release to warehouse. Okay. One more thing before I go there, I'll just show you the reservation as well. So how the reservation would look like. So you see the five reserved ordered, right? And then I go to release to warehouse. So this will be actually, um, there's an, while it generates, I'm going to the, uh, let me see whether I have it in the uh, plan cross token now. Okay, let's go back here while it load. Um, so what happens here, if you see that it's created, um, shipment USMF has been assigned and then they pass. So there's no work generated. So that will be the interesting part to note. So what will be there? It will be having a load and a shipment. Okay, so let's go to the load and see. Okay, so if you go to the load, so here, if you notice that uh, plant cost stocking, so that's the plant cost stocking quantity. So that would be five. And uh, there's two more buttons here, plant cost stocking and the cancel cost stocking. So you can cancel cost stocking clicking here, but if you want to see the uh, the inquiry, this is the plant cost stocking, the, um, the place that you can see the plant cost stocking. So this will give you the information on which uh, PO, it will be mapped. So this is a PO, but if you mapped against the TO, that will be uh, there as a reference TO. Um, so this is against the PO, so this is a PO reference. And then you have the order. And uh, since we haven't processed yet, so it will show as a remainder and the quantity file, right? And that's me not yet closed the, uh, the load. So that's why the closed is blank. So that's how you know when it's been uh, completed. Um, so just trying to get the plan cross docking screen. Let me see, because I noticed that here I didn't see the plan cross docking. Let me see if this version. Yeah, okay, that's still that's showing still here. Okay, let's go over to the plan cross docking. Did, did 
click it. Yeah, yeah, it's loading. Okay, so this is the inquiry screen, but this is a temp table. So that is the problem if you try to use using the workspaces, add into the workspaces because it's a temp table. And uh, okay, um, so more about here. So you see that um, this is the one which we did now. So I have the five remainders. So it's, if you see this two look similar, and this will have uh, contain all the all the orders, but this will be for the particular order that I was clicking through from the uh, load details itself here. And uh, it will give you that it's been remainder, so it's still yet to be coming in to receive it. So, okay. So that part has been done. And just one more thing I can show is the shipment ID as well. So shipment is also created for this, but there's no work generated for it. So when the work generated will be when you receive the PO. We will see that soon. Okay. So this is a, the file quantity here in SEMF and and if I go to work details, there's nothing, basically. Yeah, so there's nothing. Let's uh, let's go back to the SO again. Okay, and let me let me go to the plant cross stocking. And in this case, it is okay. This is the patch order, so I'm gonna go to the um, mobile uh, emulator so I'm using the mobile emulator so if you use the, the warehouse app it will be also same so let me log in to this so uh, I'm going to use the two-step method here so I'm going to say the purchase receive and put away after that I'm going to PO receive one and let's say may um okay let's go back to the the so to show you so i have five quantity but let's say in po maybe i'm receiving uh 10 from the supplier so i'll say 10. i'm going to click ok and so this is the first step okay that's been done and go to the purchase uh, the way so if i go back here um to the work now so you can see that the work has been generated now because i did the first step so you see the work order type preference is cross docking and there is a pick and put away as well and this is actually going to the cross dock so not going to the bay door so it's going to the cross stock because we our setup is like that uh, as i as i mentioned earlier so it will go to the cross stock and let's go back here so work id so if you notice um it, it's giving you the uh, here cross docking pick and quantity five pieces because I'm receiving 10 quantity, but actually uh, the first part, it will go to the cross docking pick, the five quantities. Right. So that's been uh, done. And if you can see, there's no uh, remainder. So that's been completed. And, uh, and also if I go to the work as well, Work is in, in process because um, they're asking to complete the other part. Um, so I say done and say OK. So that part has been done. So if you come here and see now it's been closed, right? So this has been closed already. And if I go to the load and then I can over the shipment basically. Go to the shipment. And click the shipment here. Confirm shipment. And then I'll do the packing slip. So 
so that's how that's how it will be for the the cross stuffing for the the uh, two step method just um, PO receiving uh, PO against its mark against the PO and full quantity and it's not a mix scenario okay so so that we demo that part so that is fine um, let's show you the other method so we did actually cancel so we actually use purchase receive and put away but in this method I'm going to use PO receiving and put away so one step um, yeah so we need another SO let me come back here just create a new SO and then we'll do this Let's do the same similar scenario, but instead of uh, two step, we'll use one step to receive this. Um, let's say five quantity, and just I'm just gonna do this. Let's confirm the SO. Have done. Yeah, the confirmation has been done. So let's um, let's go to the marking and let me mark against the PO, the same PO we had earlier. So this is the open PO we have. So I've marked the full quantity here. Apply. And okay. Yeah, so that's been done. And go to release. Uh, warehouse, release to warehouse. Everything same, just that I have only one menu item to do it. Yeah, so that's been done. So I've created uh, my uh, load, but there's no work, same. Um, let me go to the load, show you the plan cross stocking. Yeah. yeah, so I go to the plan cross stocking, so it should have the pi quantity against that uh, PO. Right, and let's try PO receiving and put away the uh, one step method. Nine. And uh, we say maybe 10 in this case as well. So you can see the cross stocking peak, and that will be uh, to the receiving location. And this is the item quantity five. And then the cross stocking put and cross stock uh, LP and the item. So this is the, the purchase order pick. So you have, because we have 10 quantity, five for the cost of five for the, the pick for the PO. Okay, then this is the put away. And then we're done. So it's just a one step, okay. And let me go to the cross docking screen. Try and cross docking. Just to show you the difference, um, in this case, I'm not going to do that uh, load completion. So because of the load previous one, if you see, that's been completed. This is the, the current one which we did. So it's not uh, having a close date because we haven't completed the load and uh, shipment. So that will be there. So that's how you identify. And this has been completed and there's no remainder. So that's that's how the one step method. So, so that's... Um, 
the one step method um, you can use as well. Um, just to be careful on the, uh, just to do uh, some more thorough testing on the serial and the batch. But I believe, if I remember correctly, it's working for the for this menu item, but for the load is the one which is not working still. Um, can show you what the different on the uh, mobile device menu item. If you're interested to see that. Two step and the one step. So, Oh, let's see. Uh, let's show the two-step one. So this is the two-step. So you have receive and then put away. Um, so under the receive, you need to mention that uh, the crosstalk, uh, the work class ID, right? And then, um, sorry, that's under the um, Under the put away, you just need to mention the cost of uh, order type. I think the refreshing was late. So let's go to the let's go to the PO. Um, my one step method, the one step method I used. Um, so you have the purchase order line item receiving and put away. So it's a one step, and you can also do uh, this. In this case, you don't not mentioning any work class ID because you don't have the that um, uh, work classes map to hit uh, in this in this case, but it will be working for this uh, work creation process for the work creation process. You don't need to map. Um, okay, so that's been done. So we've done the uh, basic two cases. Okay, one more scenario I I would like to show um, before we move to the because I can't show in this environment the TO and the mix scenarios. So I'll use the the video to show that. But um, what I want to show you in the the, the uh, there's another okay, um, what I'll show you the released warehouse uh, screen and then I'll also have a um, I think I have some SOs so I could show directly here let's see yeah so this is actually another uh, cross docking scenario if you see um, let me go into the sales order. Let me see. Just to double check, it's a cross talking one. Um, oh no, this one we haven't. Probably I'll create a new one. Let me create a new one. I'm not going to do the confirmation, but we'll try here on the release to warehouse screen. Without that, to save some time for some more demos. So I'm just going to mark it and apply. Okay, that's done. And let me come here. Refresh, so that's I think the 41841. So if I use uh, release to warehouse screen and add it, and you will see this could not be released because uh, there's no uh, available quantity. But if you use, what's the difference here is like, uh, you can select the lines and you can do the partial release, but here is actually through the whole order when you release to warehouse. So you don't have that feature for the cross docking. So I'm actually, um, I've actually, this is my blog. So I have actually uh, done explaining on this scenario on here today. I just published it, and there is a uh, vote. Um, if you would like to vote for this idea, please feel free to go to this um, this um, Microsoft Idea Portal and read my blog and just go to this Idea Portal and then please submit the vote. That would be a really good feature to have. 
and at the moment we don't have that so you could yeah you could uh, vote for this idea and so this is the this is which actually missing uh, in the release to so you can't you can't do um, the release uh, the partial release but there's a uh, workaround but those workarounds are not ideal um, to do um, so I'm not gonna explain much because uh, on the the workaround is not not going to be helpful for much because it depends on the leak sequence or you change the addresses but it's not uh, ideal um, so this should be in the uh, the release to a house screen that would be the best uh, for the users to do the uh, the release for the partial um, partial uh, release for the cost docking if it's involved with the cost docking um, so that's the issue I was talking about so if you have uh, if you if you're interested, please feel free to go to my blog and uh, submit uh, a vote for that. And let me come back to my slides for the video for the TO. And uh, let's go through that and the mix the other scenario as well. Let me go. Yeah. So this is the TO scenario. So we are doing the same thing, but uh, instead of the PO, we are using the TO. So we have the the transfer order, and we have the uh, warehouse uh, from a house and to a house given, and create a new SO. So this is the part of creating the SO here. So what happened? Um, so what happens in the the fifteen actually? It doesn't allow you to um, release with the mix items, so that's why for the, the TO and the on hand mix have an issue. So, if same similar, you create a SO here, and uh, save it, and then you confirm the sales order. And the marking has, has been done here. So the marking will be against the TO in this case. So that's the TO, TO number four. So we'll be marking against TO number four. Let me apply. Okay. And go to the warehouse, release to warehouse here. So, as we mentioned earlier, so no work will be generated, will be generated the uh, load and the shipment. Yeah, that's another way of going to the load. So, if you want, you can go from the line details, click the load. And if you see the work, there's no work generated in this scene. So until you receive it, uh, you don't have the work generated uh, until you see from the TO side. So this is the planned rock uh, inquiry screen. Yeah, that is the supply order number. And go to the transfer receive. So you're going to receive in this case to your four. Line receiving. Enter the LP. Then that's completed. So you see the, the transfer order. And if you can check here, so you see that uh, it's been already completed um, against the TO. So the, the other part will be um, 
similar. So you'll have the work generated. And it will be work order type cross docking, and then it's marked against that uh, the order number, and you could do the cross dock as well. Right. So you can um, let me go to the uh, the next scenario. Um, let's see uh, the mix scenario. So if you have a inventory mark against, uh, so this is a phase order, and then it's been marked against the um, quantity four and one. So, so the reservation wise, if you see one coming from the physical and the four from marked uh, PO. So this is actually a mixed scenario with inventory, uh, some part of the inventory coming from the inventory on hand, the other part is coming from the PO, the demand is fulfilling from the uh, PO, the rest. Yeah, so if you go to the, the load details, um, you see plan cost stock is four, but the original quantity is five here. And if you go to the plant cross docking, it'll show all the details which PO you can uh, mark against. And you can go to this, you take the PO, and you can use the, uh, the one step method I'm using here PO receiving input away. And then you uh, receive the quantity that you want to receive 10 or uh, whatever the quantity that will be receiving from the, uh, from the vendor side. You'll be receiving it. So if it's marked, uh, if it's marked against the sales orders, it'll automatically uh, will be uh, creating the workload, uh, creating the work as you do this operation. Let's take four uh, for the cross docking, and six will be put away. We can put the cross docking, and then it will be picked for receiving location, and then uh, pick from the receiving location. It, that is for the PO, which is for the pick. And then we put away. Done. So um, that's that's basically uh, that part. And it's been completed. So if you go back to the um, yeah, I think you can't. Um, I think uh, here you be. Um, we're trying to go and if you try to do the outbound shipment, it, it will not complete. That's what we're showing here because uh, you haven't received the the other other piece that it should be uh, done together because it's only for coming from cross The other other part you have to be picking. So if you go to the load and the work here, you will see that um, so two two of these so this and the um, the cross docking, so this part has to be completed in order to be completing it. So you just uh, pick the sales order picking normal, normal sales order picking, and then it's be done. You can complete it, complete the load and the shipment. So that is the last one. So yeah, so I was talking about how do I enable the features. So if you go to the feature management, you can enable this plan cross docking. So that's how you can enable it. And the, the, the important thing to be notified is this feature cannot be turned off once it has been enabled, so make sure if you really need it, and then only enable it in your environment. If not, you are not required to en uh, enable this feature. And uh, let me go through some of the plan cross docking fixes that I had. So there were some issues on the um, inquiry screen initially with the TOs and the um, TOs and the POs, I guess, uh, when you up, when you update the the quantity is not being updated uh, properly. If you have a, a com, um, combined scenario with PO and TO fulfilling the requirement, so this fixes has been done in 10.09 or 10, and this one is actually crossed out the marked uh, transfer order receive is not valid for the template, so this will be this is resolved. Um, in 10 dot order 15, so that's why the uh, that's why the the issue I had because the the environment I'm using is 15, the uh, trial version coming from Microsoft, so it's uh, original one. So they had the 
had the issue on the cluster and this is about serialized item using so you're unable to receive the serialized item so there was an issue for the unable to receive the serialized item this is for the one step methods and uh, this was the one I was talking about. Uh, if you like, please for, go ahead and vote for this idea for the release to a health screen. And these are the resources you can find from the docs side on the docs. Um, that will be uh, there for uh, you to pick up all the information on the docs side. And then I have uh, my um, site as well. So I have some other um, uh, for, so other uh, warehouse related uh, articles as well you can have a look and this will be also video on the warehouse basic uh, information on the, the 101 warehouse 101 and you can find scanning this QR code for my site as well as my uh, the YouTube channel and thank you so um, feel free to answer any questions now if you have any thanks Kasun yeah uh, if any of your participant can ask any of the question from Kasan. If we have any question, because I don't have any question in chat. If you can unmute yourself and ask the question from Kasan. Okay, Kasan, I have one question. Um, yeah, sure. uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, as you have really a good experience in advanced warehousing, so do, uh, do you guys have some client uh, who is using uh, uh, standard costing and they want to use this marking option of cross docking. Mm, I haven't come across uh, the standard costing in my scenario. They're not using the standard costing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's more of FIFO and all that. Right? Yeah. And the, okay. Yeah. Rate and average and FIFO. Yeah. Not okay. the standard costing. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I know okay. that's a that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a problem uh, yeah. <laughs> right now. I'm just facing it with one of my clients, and yeah. uh, you know the marking option does not work with the standard costing. So mm -hmm. I was just looking after yeah. any other solution for the cross docking if we have, because we have to create the purchase order. I think uh, uh, by uh, no, we cannot yeah. mark or uh, relate the purchase but order you between. Can, mm -hmm. uh, you can try the uh, instead of the marking, you can try the other options, which will I haven't tried, but uh, yep. you could possibly try with the other options. But uh, you can't do the marking, so that uh, mm -hmm. that's the part which you. But you can try with the older template. So you could try with the other two options. I haven't tried, but reservation. I yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you just Thanks, paste Kirsten. the the yeah. template, and then yeah, you can. Uh, try the other options, uh, see if it works, but it will be, I think, for the full order quantity. So that will be, because the marking is the only mm -hmm. place you can tell how much quantity, uh, but um, let me go to the cost of template because the full order quantity might not be, I don't know, in your scenario, if it's one to, mm -hmm. I know the full quantity may may, may suit you, but yeah. you can check, yeah, order reservation. Order reservation. Yeah. yeah. See if it oh. works because then you're using the order reservation on the marking. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Do we have any other question? Uh, I think if we don't have, you know, no problem. Kasun is available on LinkedIn and uh, I, as he is really helping the community. So if you have any question, just ask him. He will, he will try his best to answer your question. Okay. So uh, I, in the end, I, 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 okay. Yeah, Dheeraj, we have Dheeraj. Uh, uh, I have one question. So Kasun, you are talking about this release to warehouse where we can have a partial release to warehouse functionality, which you were, uh, you were showcasing us that it is not available right now, or um, it is really, uh, Yeah, for the cross talking yeah. it's not available. Yeah. Okay. But for the general okay. Okay. Uh, sales lines, you you can do that. Yeah. But if it's yeah. related okay. to cross docking, it's not available. Because yeah. It's checking against the inventory on hand quantity, um, so it's not okay. enhanced to the cross docking. So uh, this is one of the things I'm also facing currently. So I'm actually putting All the right. idea for Microsoft to come do. I mean, to keep the feature here, that would be the best. But um, so far in the standard, um, you can't do that. Yeah, but for the general, uh, I mean, if it's not cross cross talk related, you can do it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kasan. No. Okay. Hey, do we have any one else who I want to ask the question? Okay. 
okay if not then uh, in then thank you very much kasan for sharing your knowledge with us it was a very informative session and i hope that with the help of this session wider anz d365 fenops community will take the advantage of getting knowledge about cross docking and advanced warehousing so i would like to thank everyone who join us on saturday and i really appreciate it have a nice weekend ahead and thanks a lot amma and thank Faisal you. and vishal and rachid and yeah all the organizers thanks a lot thank you everyone thank you thank, thank you kasun for giving thank us you. your valuable time thank you kasun thank, thank you kasun this was thank too valuable thank you thank you very much no worries thank, thank you. you you have a Bye-bye. nice day all have a nice day same to you same to you same all same to you all thank you